go ahead, Kim. Hey, Marshalina, what, what was it like watching last year, obviously, you know, going through the injury and the rehab and, and seeing the team's success? Uh, I know you must have been happy in some respects, but there's probably a, a party in the field like you wish you would have been out there contributing. What, what were the emotions like? <clears throat> Yeah, of course, I wish I, I would have been able to contribute. Um, I've had some uh, battles with my trainer, uh, Jake Laverman, Jacob Laverman. Um, and I would tell him, uh, uh, I think around Wisconsin, uh, no, it was Michigan State for sure. Um, I don't know how far out I was on my, on my, on my surgery, but I wasn't too far out. <laughs> I remember looking up, uh, um, you know, when's the quickest you can come back from an ACL injury and things like that. Um, basically, watching them play or listening to listening to them play, you know, through radio or through however I could access the games, I was sitting there like, man, like they going off, they balling, the whole D just swarming around. The defense was doing, you know, all these zone blitzes, these coverages, all these different things that were so successful. And the offense was going off too, you know, Mike and Top Fry and Wop and. You know everybody on the team, even the O line, the D line, and um, so for me, I was happy for him for sure. Especially the Penn State game, I like recorded the whole thing on Instagram Live, um, and that was that was the day of my surgery. So I just got home, and the game was that same day, and um, so it was it was good to see him ball out, and I didn't have no no negative thoughts. It was just more so like, shoot, can I can I could I go out there and play like. You know, just put me in a, a little zone. Like, I can't do man-to-man. -man. I probably can't blitz right now. But you put me in a little cover three, cover four, I could, I could go out there right now um, two, three months out. Um, so, yeah. John and Zach. And so where are you kind of in your recovery at this point? I mean, I know you've been through um, an injury before, surgery and kind of rehab, so it's kind of second time around. But, I mean, are, are you close to being full go practice or does that come later? Or kind of what's your, where are you at right now? Um, it'll come later. Um, I'm pretty uh, uh, far out, um, I think. Um, um, but I, uh, as far as, you know, practicing with the team and doing team-specific things, I think, that 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 come a little later, but it's all good though. Like the stuff I'm doing with my uh, guys, like me, Sam Dogstrip, and um, I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. But my other O line man, that's, uh, that's so messed up. Oh, Khalil Benson, my bad. Um, yeah, us three. So we we had our surgery on the same day, and so we're, you know, we're basically on the same time time frame. So we when we train with Jacob, um, you know, we train hard. And and we'll be back when we when we when it's time to come back. Zach Van Dillon. Sorry, Zoom is all screwed up for me there. I apologize. Marcelino, I guess people have asked you this in, in different ways, but I mean just it, especially as you, you get closer to being able to just kind of do everything, no restrictions, whatever, just um, is it strange ever just looking around and thinking you know, I'm I'm maybe the oldest old man of the group now in terms of there's there's not anybody in here who's been around as long as I have. There's not as anybody in here who's seen as much as I have. Just kind of what's it what's it like being the guy that that literally everybody else kind of has to look up to from an experience perspective. Um, I used to think like that, like um, my senior year, my true senior year. I think that was 2019. I used to be like, hey man, I'm old. I was only what 19, you know, and that really messed with my head. Like you really, you know, I see I seen it a lot. You know, players when I was even a young young underclassman, and the and the the seniors at the time would be like, "Hey, I'm so old. Like, I'm an old head," and that's that's what it's called um, when you when you've been here so long, fifth year or or fifth or fourth year or fifth year. That's pretty like much an old head, and you walk around like, "Hey, I'm old. I've I seen all this." And that stuff really get in your head. Like you'll start moving like an old man, you know. So, um, twenty twenty, you know, going into that season, I kind of flipped the the switch as far as like, I'm twenty, I'm twenty one years old. I just turned twenty one. Um, on my fifth year, you know, typically fifth year guys are like twenty two, twenty three. So, I changed my perspective as like me being an old head. I'm only twenty one years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now, I turned twenty two on the twenty third. I'm still young, you know what I'm saying? So, like, as far as my, my uh, experience here, yeah, that I've been here a while, like you said. But 
I mean, I don't really see myself as an old head. You know, I just, I just, I just been here like, and, and that's cool. Like I've experienced it all. I know what it feels like, you know, metaphorically speaking, I know what it feels like when the lights are off, meaning like when we don't have a bowl game, when we go five and seven, when we go, I think that's the worst I've ever experienced, but five and seven is, is pretty terrible. You know, I know when, how it feels when the lights are off and we barely beat uh, Ball State, no disrespect to Ball State, but you get what I'm saying. Um, and so now to, to experience, you know, that 2020 season, just through the sidelines or through the through the lens of a, uh, or through the through the TV screen, um, it's just a, it's, I guess the best way to say it is a blessing to, to see it all from 2016 when Coach Allen was just our DC to 2017, he's our head coach and our DC. And then 2018, I think that's when Kane came. And then now we, we're at, we're, our DC is Coach Warren and just, even the transitional offense and, and just the different players that came, the, the walks of life, just watching people grow. Like looking at Monster or Cam Jones that you just uh, interviewed, like I watched them grow, you know, it's crazy. Um, but as far as being here so long, like that don't really phase me. Cause I, I, everybody time gonna come. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, uh, I'm making the days count. Dylan and Dustin. Hey, Marcelino. Uh, my birthday is the 23rd, too, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we talked to you last fall. Uh, you mentioned how you were just in a pretty good uh, space mentally, especially after going through some, some tough spots. I guess, you know, as a leader on the team, especially through through last season where with the guys and everything they had to go through with, with COVID and everything, playing through that, did you feel like since, since you had kind of put yourself in a good space and you went through some things that, you know, you were able to kind of help certain guys and if things got difficult at times. Could you repeat that? Could you repeat that? Like I listened, but I couldn't really grasp what you were trying to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last fall we talked to you, you just, you mentioned how you were in a good space mentally um, a after going through, you know, some things that you were able to kind of be positive and just, you know, with the team playing through the COVID season, things maybe could have gotten tough. Did you feel like you could help some guys, especially because, you know, you, you were in such a good space and you kind of knew how to work through things? Yeah, most def. Um, <laughs> being injured or having a season injury, injury, you could always give a guy perspective. You know, I remember one game, um, my guy Stevie, I don't mean to point him out or anything. He had, he had just not, he, had, he didn't have one of his best games, put it that way, right? I'm like, hey, it could be worse. And I'm smiling, he, you know, he's down. He's like, dang, man, I'm like, it could be worse, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, and all I was saying in that is just like, you could have had no game at all, either like me, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and that, that was probably like the, the more extreme, extreme probably conversation I had, you know, if a guy had a bad game. But other than the COVID, I feel like our guys, they, uh, they handled it well. You know, it, it was sometimes a hassle. Um, especially in the beginning, you know, that with the up and down in the summer and going into the fall. But once the season came, I think guys handled it well. Um, but when it came to, you know, bad, bad practice or bad games, I'm like, I could, I could, I could shut it down with, with it could be worse. Four words, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It could be worse. All right, Dustin. Marceline, obviously the this, this scheme isn't necessarily going to change with a new defensive coordinator, but what's you done, uh, you know, Carlton Worm so far, how do you think you fit in with what he wants to do and how much you've been able to kind of bond with him and get a, uh understanding of him so far? Um, I'm so sorry. I, I like zoned out. Could you ask it again? <laughs> yeah, what, uh, just what, what's your read been on Carlton Warren so far? What, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, nah, he's been a cool guy. Yeah, he's, no, he's been a cool guy. Um, he came in with that energy. Um, the best thing I, I, I heard him say, I think he said it yesterday or the day before, he was like, uh, no one has a job, you know, talking about the defense and, and, and talking about positions, you know, nobody has their job. And he said, including me, he was talking about himself. And that really, like, that really, uh, I feel like that stuck with the players. Like, oh, like, he, he getting up every day to work because he knows somebody wants his job, and that's true. You know, there's, there's somebody, you know, in the coaching uh, field that, that wanted to be the DC here. And he, he's, he's got the position to, he's put himself in the position to be the DC here. And he gonna make sure that he, he keeps his job. And so that means he's gonna make sure his guys, us, are gonna be ready. 
And um, as far as the defense that he, he's uh, bringing out and, um, you know, plotting with the, with the staff, it's looking good. Like, I, it looked good, to put it that way. All right, John, and then we'll wrap up with Zach. Uh, just in terms of your decision making and coming back, I mean, I guess the one fortunate thing about this past season is that everybody got an extra year. I mean, how automatic was it for you once you got hurt and you knew it was an opportunity to come back that, like, I'm going to come back and, yeah. you know, take that chance, opportunity? Yeah. Um, best way I could summarize that is uh, as much as uh, nobody wants an ACL, nobody wants a sin season ending injury, right? Stub toe. A little messed up shoulder. People play through it. People get through it. Season in the injury, that is, especially for seniors, that's it's fatal. That's pretty extreme. But you, you get what I'm saying. So as much as, you know, it was sad and, and, you know, like, man, like, being able to be a part of that 2020 team was so, like, it hurt and everything like that. Um, it, like, made me think, like, how, like last year, you know, um, for a potential six, fifth year anywhere in, in the country in college, or, or the, just the number of player the, the players la the previous year that got hurt and had a season ending injury and was a fourth year fifth year, and they didn't have no sixth year opportunity because of because uh, of you know the, the NCAA allowing it and everything like that. Like I'm, I had like you know what I'm saying like I had to take take advantage of that. You know, like that doesn't happen. So um, it's a blessing in, disgu is this in disguise, I guess. Um, and I appreciate it. Um, so, you know, having that opportunity to come back or having that opportunity in my back pocket was, it was great to have because I know not too many people w would have that, would have had that, or even going forward, you know. All right, Zach, last one. Sorry, this is um, kind of a, a bigger picture question, but we've asked you and Cam a lot about just kind of how the defense might change under Coach Warren. Um, and you've played for a couple different kind of defensive coordinators now. I guess what what in your mind has stayed the same? Because I know that it, it, in the same you know, sort of breath, it's, it's still Coach Allen's defense. It's the one he brought when he was defensive coordinator, obviously, uh, before he was head coach. I mean, what do you think are kind of the things that, they kind of remain fundamentals, I guess, about this defense, even as maybe different coaches or, or coordinators or even players maybe, you know, tweak it a little bit in different ways. It tackling hunger. You know what I'm saying? Or takeaways. And takeaways. Takeaways is a big thing, you know. Um, those are the fundamental things. No matter what DC comes in. Um, if our coach comes in, you know, Coach Warren's the guy. Um, man, that's it. It's t tackling takeaways. Um, that's what we that's what we live by. That's what we gonna that's what we gonna die by. <laughs> um, so yeah, no matter what what scheme we got, no matter how many blitzes we or how many guys we blitz through the through the a gap and everything like that, no matter you know what zone we got in the backfield. We don't have that. It's lost, you know. So, um, and every year, like I said, like just being here for so long, like every year, I see it more and more and more. That edge just builds. The tackling gets better and better. And them takeaways. You seen them takeaways last year? <laughs> you seen them takeaways last year? So, it's just more and more. So yeah. All right. Thanks, Lino. I right, appreciate y'all.